I would like to ask you all just a few questions and you can uh, give your honest opinion about it. So first of all, in general, what do you feel about the yoga teacher's training course which you have just completed at yogapoint.com? Um, and we really got the skills of really teaching going home. Um, but it was exhausting as well. So it's not a holiday. <laughs> it's really hard work. And um, yeah, you really have to um, go through certain challenges. But in the end, it's really satisfying, I have to say, to get all the skills. Yeah. Uh, just adding to that, we did mention in the beginning of the course that this is not a resort. Mm -hmm. It's an ashram, <laughs> yeah. discipline. And otherwise, as a community living together and doing karma yoga together and um, learning together, improving each other's teaching techniques and asanas, it was really all in all, as she said, very well planned and very beneficial. If they want to enter the world of yoga and everybody's here, especially the teachers are, are here for us and they help us and they became, we, began, we became friends with them and you can ask them anything, whatever it is. And it's really more like a community helping out each other more than like a, a course with exams. And, and I think we all love each other now. And <laughs> it's a, it'll be a really good thing to take back home. Like the teaching, uh, learning asanas, it's also a lot about like uh, personal growth and experience. But when we have some silence day, you get to observe um, your silence thought and get to know yourself better even from lectures you have um i get to experience a lot of self-realization it's uh, one of the main part that um, has influenced me i think in one uh, in a short one month that i think it's one of the best of this month as well besides from like being in the community having meeting new friends and also to have more disciplined lifestyle. Okay, I'll interfere in between. Like you guys have been talking about ashram life. So can someone add to it that what was the ashram life? What was the lifestyle here? What was the daily schedule? And what all things you did since you got up in the morning till your bedtime? So if anyone would like to talk about it. You wake up about, about like 5 or 5.30 five in the morning. At 6, you got asana class on time for doing karma yoga in the morning as well. So every, every one of us is assigned with a task that has to do in the morning. Uh, it can involve like anything, like contributing in this community, like from like helping in the kitchen to cleaning like some areas. Then you got breakfast, which is really amazing <laughs> and tasty. <laughs> Um, then you got some time to kind of like have a shower and that and then you start with lecture time so you got usually like two hours isn't it like two three hours yeah, two hours. Yeah. Yeah. and then you have lunch about 12 30. um then again well we've been doing like yoga and nidra as well like from time to time after that and then some more lectures and then asana. and then again asana, asana class asana. for two hours so yes it's like uh, four hours of uh, asana yoga class yeah, in total every day and then, and then having we yeah so we go to yeah it's like a little temple yeah yeah inside the ashram and then we all chant mantras okay. together yeah um it yeah and then sometimes at night time you got like uh, some storytelling <laughs> happening <laughs> as well um Ah, well, and dinner about like seven, yeah. and then you go to bed. So it's like really strict, and you basically have like so little time, but it's so good. Like at the beginning, I was like really shocked, but now I don't know, it's like really lovely. <laughs> you prepare for um, exams, yeah. Yeah. you uh, try to keep all the information. Um, information you got in the classes to prepare for the final presentation so it's yeah. not only the schedule it's also like fitting all the extras in there yeah so you really uh, emotionally it's very tough because yeah. sometimes you got these days like you are loving it and sometimes you got these days thinking oh my god i can't take this any longer so yeah, yeah. but if people in the ashram sense that he, some people are emotionally breaking down then there would be a pleasant surprise like you can pick mulberries from the tree mm -hmm. and you, you'll get mango yes. or you know, something that will just cheer you up and keep you going for yeah. another two days. <laughs> it's kind of disciplining you in, and it's like getting you into a routine that you are not so used to. So I kind of go back like learn how to be disciplining myself and like it's kind of tough in the first week but getting here is like oh, okay I'm getting there.
the cycles of your body like you wake up early in the morning and then you go back early in the night as well which is really good for your body the food here is mm. really amazing they will tell you about it but mm. yeah it's really good to like get in touch with your yeah inner self again I mean, more than anything, the food. And, <laughs> and all back to basic, where uh, you stay closer to nature, um, no makeup, <laughs> no well dressed clothes, all in like baggy pants, <laughs> t-shirts, all getting comfortable <laughs> with yeah. each other. Yeah. Of the daily schedule, as you all were talking about, was karma yoga. So, can anyone elaborate what is this karma yoga? Because many people around the world, they really don't have an idea of what karma yoga is so can anyone of you talk a little bit more about karma yoga um, so karma yoga is something that we do for an hour every day that's the uh, required uh, time that we spend on it otherwise anybody who wants to put an extra time can do that we are typically broken into groups of two or three the group changes every day and we are assigned tasks. The tasks can be anything from cleaning the hall where we practice every day to cleaning the common toilets. It can be helping out with chopping fruits in the kitchen. It's an excellent time to bond with your batchmates because you're working with a different group every day. And uh, it's also a very humbling process. You know, you learn, you learn the effort that goes into doing the work that keeps the place beautiful. Um, if somebody could talk about what exactly Karma Yoga is. Um, this is something we learned in one of our theory lectures. But this is something that you can always keep in your mind that when you help someone or when you help within a community, it not only increases your sense of belonging to that place or in the world, but it also provides you with like a very deep sense of satisfaction and happiness. And uh, uh, scientifically, it basically increases your oxytocin hormones, which are like way more satisfying than just like immediate yeah yeah, yeah dopamine yeah. Just like you know it just eat, they give give us this example all the time that you would rather eat a chocolate alone or you would share it with others so yeah that and nobody ever thought that doing chores around the house would be like a satisfying thing that percentage in the world is very less but when you look at it from the point of yoga uh, and you don't have to really just agree to it. You just have to first try it once and then you understand what they're trying to say. So like in life, everything is about perception. And so is this. I mean, the more you contribute, the more hap the happier you would be. Like, who knew? We didn't know that <laughs> before <laughs> this. So yeah, that's the thing. And literally, I think most of us, even like we had some days where we didn't have to do any karma yoga and I think 70% of the people were oh, out and yeah. about doing something, yeah. helping around. So that I think says enough. As the main part of any, like the teacher's training course, definitely the main part which you have been doing mornings two hours and evening two hours, the asana practice. So can you comment on the asana practice which you have been doing here for the last one month? and what you got positively out of the asanas, the way you were doing the asanas here? Um, the asana class uh, started in a, in a tone that it uh, started from like, very basic that we learn from preparatory movement. Uh, we get corrections step by step from the very basic Surya Namaskar and did a lot of repetition every day. At the beginning, it was uh, a bit bored if you are like uh, already an advanced uh, your, your, your yoga practice but uh, eventually you get to know that uh, it's essential to know the get in like real deep knowledge about the fundamentals before like getting to know more at once and we we'll get we, we get to learn to do headstand in three weeks which is uh, amazing yeah, another thing that's important I think is we really learn to listen to our body and to be aware of how to do the asanas and what we're doing. Um, and I think, especially for me, like at the first week I, I pushed myself too hard and I got injured and I really had to be more careful and listen to my body, especially when you do four hours of asanas per day. Um, you really realize how, how your body works and how you have, you have to take care of it if you want good results in the long term. It's not just pushing and pushing and pushing that's going to give you to be to do headstand or, or shoulder stand. It's really to be aware of what's happening. Yeah. 
I mean, I've been doing yoga for a year and I couldn't do the headstand. And we came here and all we've been doing is slow and steady exercises. <laughs> and now I can just lift the headstand. Like I can just lift my legs like this. <laughs> I can wake up and do a headstand like this. <laughs> oh, wake up me though in the night. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> Well, I think that it, it was a very good experience to really get to know the asanas. So we had a lot of repetition of the asanas. We started really, really, really basic, but um, we really um, also came very fast in the end to really um, advanced asanas. So in the first two weeks it was really basic and I thought we will never go anywhere more advanced. But then in the third week it was just, okay, now you do the advanced stuff. and. We, we could really do it and with a lot of um, mm -hmm. yeah, good helpers around we were pre pretty all of us were able to do things we never thought we would do yeah. so um, yeah but the, for me the most important thing was to really get to know the asanas theoretically and practi practically and really repeat them that you yeah I could really inhale the asanas and now even at least the basic ones, I think I'm really ready to teach to others. Is that the three things that you focus on when you learn any new asana? Is the purpose, your body's capability and your alignment. I have gone to many yoga uh, classes before, but I've never really looked at asanas that way. I think this practice helps you to get the best out of each asana for yourself. And I'm sure I'll be able to, you know, go back and teach that to other people as well. That, that's a very, that's a huge plus that I've learned only here. As we are Muslims, so before coming to this place, I was very much in doubt how I will be I treated here. But uh, the treatment is just like any other student and there is no, no obstruction in our religion. Like we can pray namaz over here uh, in our times, getting our times. Like there is no foundation you have to be like for havan and love because havan and our namaz time is just... Uh, same. So mm. we pray namaz in our room and other students go to heaven. So I found it very nice about this place. Yeah, that's what I found. Yoga is very uh, kind of secular. Is it the right word? Yes. Secular. And uh, it's not attached there, to any no religion. To yoga. It's not attached to any religion. So we can practice our faith, Islam, and then we can also practice yoga. So we really like to encourage other Muslims uh, all around the world the Indian Muslims or Arab Muslims or even African Muslims they can all come around over here and they can uh, enjoy all the benefits of yoga yoga is just not asanas there is um, much more that is it. just the tip of the iceberg there is just much more to it you really need to come and experience this uh, ashram life to know and uh, get the maximum benefits of yoga as they have been talking about uh, Havana and uh, like yoga being secular and other things so one of the parts of the daily schedule was definitely Havan and Mantra chanting. So I would like you people to comment on what was your experience when you went to the Havan, when you went for the Mantra chanting. What was your experience, what was your feeling about Mantra chanting? Okay, I have to talk on the Havan because I was the one going nearly every day. <laughs> Despite the others, they were. <laughs> well, um, for me, the, I, I never did really a mantra chanting before, so it was my first experience. Um, and it just calmed me down a lot. I have to say, it, um, I don't have a lot of meditation experience. I did one time Vipassana, so I had an, an idea of it. But for me, it's a very simple way of calming me down. Um, and really calming down the mind and really of being in the moment. So yeah, I enjoyed um, concluding every day with the Havan. And feel the energy of it everyone energy, so and yeah. it calms your mind. And at the beginning I wasn't able to close my eyes for more than five seconds. I always had to open them and look at the, what was going on. And then at the end I was just able to stay in the same position with closed eyes and focus on the mantra for the 108 times that we chanted and it, it was just <laughs> so calming and so relaxing and you really feel in peace with yourself, it was really nice. Also like in India we do havans on special occasions in our house but here I saw like havan happening every day and that brought in a very like deeper sense of spirituality in me to see you know uh, havan happening every day, that was really special. In the beginning, it was like another thing that we need to do in a day. Mm -hmm. 
But towards the end, if I don't go to heaven, it feels like I'm missing something. <laughs> became a habit. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of these mantras I've heard at home, people chanting them. I think this is the first time I understand what they mean because they take the because the teachers take the pains to explain everything to us. That Guru Vandana is how you're bowing down, you know, and asking for um, learning, and uh, how the uh, Mahamrityunjay mantra is about asking for good health and longevity. So I think that is a huge shift for me. And the most important part of mantra and this uh, all uh, Guru Vandana then prayers. The pronunciation was very very clear. That's the main focus here. Mm -hmm. Like mantras are very clear. Teaching uh, mantra style was very really good.